Hey, Michael, X-Force PC. I want to talk about um, AMD architecture and gaming and why you might want to consider a gaming mode if you've got uh, an AMD processor. Now we'll start with the 32-core, 16-thread, 2990WX. One of the limitations of this particular design is um, you've got four dies here. It's almost like having four of uh, AMD's eight core processors put onto the same die. And then they're connected with these infinity fabrics. That's these red uh, connections between them. But the big limitation here is only two of the dies, die 0 and die 2, have direct access to DDR and the PCI Express bus. So DDR, of course, is where you get your memory access, and PCIe here is how you would access storage uh, if you have a fast PCIe storage device, and of course, most importantly, graphics. So this makes them not so great at gaming um, because if any gaming occurs on this die or this die, it's going to be done at a much slower rate because there's a lot of latency on these Infinity fabrics compared to having direct access to memory and PCIe. So having to come through another die to get to memory and PCIe does create a pretty significant performance uh, impact. So what AMD has introduced for um, the 2990WX is something called gaming mode. And in gaming mode, they dumb this thing down essentially to an 8-core processor, which um, I don't know which die they would leave enabled. It's going to be 0 or 2. I would assume it'd probably be 0. And then it would have direct access to DDR and to PCIe. It would also run at a higher clock speed as if it were like a Ryzen 7 2700X and perform similarly to a Ryzen 7 2700X. And so what we found um, in I was, wasn't was able to test. I don't have one of these chips. This is like an $1,800 chip, but I have the 16-core the version, and I saw about a 20% frame rate increase in X-Plane by enabling gaming mode. Um, now, let's move on over to the 2950X, which is a 16-core, 32-thread uh, processor. This one I do have on hand. And you can see here there's two dummy cores. These are just there for heat dissipation. Um, they're just dead. And you can see we have the same situation here, but th both of these dies do have direct access to PCIe and to DDR. And you might say, well, why would I need gaming mode? Well, the cache, the L3 cache, is held uh, on each die. And let's say this die need something that's in the L3 cache over on this die, that has to go through this infinity bus, which is slower. So AMD found that in gaming, which gaming typically doesn't need more than four cores, it makes sense to disable one of these two dies and just have everything run off of one die. So on my 2950X CPU, if I go to gaming mode, it'll disable one of these dies and then I'll just have an 8 core processor with 16 threads. Each of these dies is good for 8 cores so that's why on the 32 core you saw all four of these active and on the 16 core you see only two of them active and then again when we go to gaming mode it disables it all the way down to just one die. And what that looks like, um, this is my 16 core 32 thread processor in uh, creator mode. So you're seeing all 16 cores, all 32 threads, and you're seeing here one and a half meg of L3, L2, excuse me, L1 cache, 8 meg of L2, and 32 meg of L3. Now if I switch to gaming mode, the number of boxes up here cuts in half because I'm down now to 8 cores and 16 threads. You'll also see my um, L1 tech cache, my L2 cache, and my L3 cache all cut in half because the cache is held on the die. 
and this is fine. This is expected. This is normal. This doesn't hurt anything. It's just telling me we're down to one die now. Now, um, what does that mean exactly, or how do you, you set that up? Well, it's done in the Ryzen Master software. So here you'll see in the Ryzen Master I've got 16 cores all the way across here, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. And right now I'm in gaming mode, so you can see cores 9 through 16 are disabled. And you can also see here where it says die 2, die 2. So in other words, it disabled die 2, which is where both of these, or all, excuse me, all eight of these cores live, and only die 1, die 1 here as well, is enabled. And so that prevents the, the infinity bus from having to come into play. And by eliminating the infinity bus, you eliminate a lot of latency. And what I found, again, is, at least on my config, that I saw about a 20% increase in performance. Now the way you switch between um, creator and gaming mode is you just go down here, you see right here these buttons, creator mode, game mode. If I want to go back to creator mode because I want all 16 cores for editing my video, I hit creator mode and then just hit apply up here. And then the unfortunate thing is it says I have to reboot my computer to make this change, which I'm not going to do right now. So that's just a really brief overview of what gaming mode does. Essentially on all the, the AMD um, processors that have multiple dies on the same uh, chip, it dumbs it down to one die so you're not having the um, latency of inter-die communication, which has to occur through these red channels here, which are slower. And it gives you better gaming performance because, again, games really don't care about uh, how many cores you have as long as you have four. And in many cases, two is enough. So um, if you have a eight core or more AMD processor, especially if you have a Threadripper, definitely consider uh, turning on gaming mode before you fly X-Plane or play any other game. And last but not least, we do not suggest AMD processors for gaming or for X-Plane. They're significantly slower, especially in X-Plane. Uh, I wish they weren't. I'm not an AMD fanboy. I'm not an Intel fanboy. I'm a fan of whatever's the best and the fastest. And you may say, oh, I get great performance with my Ryzen 2 2600X or whatever. You, you may do, do that, but if you had a comparable Intel, it'd still be 30% faster than what you have now. So again, your performance may be perfectly acceptable to you, but if you had the Intel, it'd be 30% faster than that. And that's unfortunately just the way that it is.